guys, how are you doing? So, today is, is a very sensitive topic, right? And it's also unscripted, like literally unscripted. And um, I just thought to share this story with you guys because most times when we are going through a particular phase or when we are going through something that seems horrific or terrible, I don't know, something that seems like an abomination, you know, as a Christian, how can you? How can you? Do you understand? <laughs> when I go through things like this and um, I overcome by the grace of God, I want to share, like, what's because people are going through it. People are going through a lot of struggles, and the reason why people, most people get depressed along the way is because lack of who to talk to, or they feel like this addiction is is peculiar to me alone. Trust me, guys. There's nothing new on that. So there is no new struggle. There is no new addiction. So whatever it is you are going through right now. I'm sure there's somebody that has overcome it or there's somebody that you know you can learn a thing or two from that person and i hope that this video does that for you from masturbation yes I was thinking about it the other day and I can't categorically say oh I knew how it all started no I know that I have struggled with masturbation for how many years give or take 12 to 15 years yes it's been a, it's been a struggle it's excuse me it's been a struggle so it's on and off start and stop start and stop but on my birthday this year i came out to testify you know in public in church in front of how many people i came out to testify that god has delivered me from addiction to masturbation and i was so glad i did that i was so glad i did that and um like i said i don't know when exactly it all started but if i'm to if i'm to connect the dots I think it would be when my mind, when I started to read romantic novels. Now, guys, please calm down. I am not telling you read romantic novels or don't read romantic novels. Everybody has different triggers, okay? I'm just narrating my story with the hope that you can learn something from it. So, back to what I was saying. I think it also when I said, <laughs> I think it all happened when I started to read romantic novels. And um, you know when they are explaining this sensual scene of this boy and this girl, how he touched her, or how he he removed the wig. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be laughing, <laughs> but trust me, you know all these romantic novels can read that the way they were explaining details. He pulled her clothes and she looked into his eyes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but yeah, as I was saying. My mind, as I was reading those parts, my mind was was also visualizing it. So if you say you drag her clothes, I'm automatically picturing that this guy that's dragging me clothes, you know, and all of that. So it started to mess with my mind. Okay? And um, I started to do what was described in that novel by myself, to myself, masturbation. As a Christian, as a child of God, as somebody who loves God, I hated myself after every act. I wanted to stop, but I didn't know how to stop. I didn't know how to stop. Once I told myself, I'm going to burn all these novels. I carried everything and, you know, I burnt it. After two months, I got another one. <laughs> you know, so it was a whole struggle of start and stop, start and stop. And then along the line, I got hooked on Netflix. Remember, please don't come and tell, don't come and say Cassandra said. I didn't say nothing. I did not say she should delete Netflix. But I am telling you that people have different triggers. 
and for me when i got hooked on netflix okay so it all started with watching innocent movies right like action movies there, there are some cool romantic no movies yeah that doesn't necessarily have the whole porn scene and porn action and all of that so yeah i love things like that as well but then i would innocently want to watch movies like that on netflix and before you know it you know um there's this suggestion from netflix oh i'm going to um trying to see how i can i'm just checking out for different movies and then i get hooked on maybe a porn rated movie and i'm like what's the harm let me just from let me just i go back to you know full-time masturbation and also it wasn't it wasn't healthy and so i told myself i'm going to delete netflix and deleted netflix after like three months i reinstalled it again so it was really yearning for god to help me overcome the struggle but i didn't know who to talk to because of fear of being judged right fear of being judged and also it was i was just it was all to myself and my god but then i knew that the bold stuff to be accountable and i reached out to you I reached out to somebody that I really respect and I told him about it. And so the accountability came in. And then there's something my father will always say. <laughs> Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. Any faith you are trusting in God for something. But you want God all by himself to do it for you. That's an irresponsible faith. So I knew that I had a part to play. And like God, I know you can help me overcome this. And so I needed to play my own part. And so the romantic novels, the the Netflix, I deleted it for the like second time and I told myself I'm not reinstalling it. Now guys, I'm not coming out here to tell you that I'm a path, I'm, I'm a perfect saint. I'm di no, I'm not. I still have certain struggles and weaknesses that I'm trusting God to help me out with. But if God has helped me with one, I want to share with the world and say, it's possible. Whatever it is you are struggling with, whatever addiction you are hooked on. Let, let, let me give you an example. Take for example, somebody who smokes. Okay, and you are trusting God that you want to stop this act. But every time you hang around certain people, you find yourself smoking. You are trusting God to help you. Your path is to cut off those friends that you hang around with. Because every time you hang around with these people, you find yourself going back to that thing that you don't want to do. Okay, so, and another thing, oh my God, I almost forgot. I never gave up on praying. I never give up. You know how you are praying and it doesn't seem like an answer is coming forth. And so there is this tendency to want to say, I beg, I'm not sure that you know my prayers are working. Let me stop. You know, but it's like a seed. It's like a seed. You keep sowing. You keep sowing until your harvest comes. <laughs> my father will always say that until your cloud is full, that is when the rain can fall. So I never give up on praying. I knew God could help me. Like it was, a, <laughs> I don't know how. Whatever it is you're struggling with, whatever it is you're struggling with, don't just give up on praying to God about it. Do the necessary things. Whatever it is you have to do, whoever you have to cut off, whatever you have to throw away, whatever you have to stop. I'm now remember, guys. I'm not saying don't, don't, uh, don't delete Netflix from your phone or, or don't read romantic novels. People have different triggers. So you need to address it individually, right? So there you have it. That's my story. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you did. So till I come your way next time, my name is Sir Cassandra Tayo. Thank you guys for always, always watching. Cheers. Please don't forget to like this video. I hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button, please.